Thank you for joining our sales enablement today. We have uh, Yob uh, as our host today, and he's going to talk through how to provide um, any product updates that you um, that are requested from your customers and or prospects uh, related to any of the the nine stages. So, Yob, I'm going to let you take that away and uh, proceed with your content. Thanks, Tina. Um, hey, everyone. This is the first time I do one of these, so if I do a bad job, give me that feedback, and I'll do better next time. Um, so uh, I wanted to mainly focus on one particular thing, which is giving feedback uh, to product. So at GitLab, product is who schedules or prioritizes things. So whatever we were building in a product, it's decided by product. And it's a small group of people. It's me, it's Mark, and uh, the individual product managers for each DevOps stage. Uh, we're about nine or so in total. Um, if there is anything you want changed or one of a customer you speak to or a potential customer uh, that has to somehow go through product. Now we get thousands of pieces of feedback a day. So uh, we created particular processes to streamline this. Um, but first and foremost, I must say that sharing feedback is the most important thing you, you can do. So no matter what you take from today, if you forget about all of it, you forget where it's all neatly written down because it is, then still share it, like share it in some way or another. Like the most important thing is, is that if you have feedback to share, you share it and you share it as quickly as possible. So without further ado, I'm gonna share my screen um, to talk you through how I would like feedback to be shared ideally. Share, all right. Um, so this is rather easy to find. It's uh, in um, our website, handbook slash product. And it's on the very top of the page. Uh, and there's two sections here. How do I share feedback? and a customer expressed interest in a feature. Now, I'm not gonna read through this, I'm just gonna give you um, the, the overview of it. What we would like is that if a customer or a, pr a prospect shares feedback, you share that ideally in the place where it's most, uh, um, the single source of truth. So that means that usually this is the issue for a particular feature or a particular change. Um, and we see this happening today. Uh, and I will, I have some bad examples to show you today of what I prefer to see improved. So a not very good example that I see very often is, is one of these. And I don't want to call out anyone in particular. I know this is a comment by rep, but this is what I see everyone doing is that it says, we have customers who are interested with a link to Salesforce. Now, let me remind you, this is better than nothing. So I highly, vastly prefer this over anything else. But there's a problem with this, and that is that it doesn't give us any additional information. Sometimes the issue that is reported on doesn't match exactly with a, a request by the customer, but it also doesn't give us any further information. Uh, and if it's just one link, sometimes it's not a big deal and a product manager might go in and see like, what is actually behind this request or what is actually this customer asking for. But in general, this, that, that is not something that scales and it also makes it very hard to you know, consider that when you scroll through an issue that we haven't scheduled yet, which is actually the case with this one, it's in a backlog. You know, we look at this and we're like, eh, I don't know if this is important. So you might be thinking, okay, what else can I do? So I have another example, which is still not good enough, uh, although I'll be slightly better. In this case, one by Jim, where Jim says, well, we have a very large prospect that requires this to replace other tools. This gives us a little bit more information. It's a very big customer. That's something that we take into consideration when we're prioritizing things as a product, right? If a very big customer wants something, that's, we give that additional weight over if it's only a single small customer that wants something. So that makes a lot of sense. But if you read this for a product manager, there's a few problems with this. It doesn't distinguish between whether a customer said, yeah, I would like that, and I will not buy GitLab unless I have this. And those two things are very far apart. Um, yet we are faced at product every single day with having to distinguish between those two because there is literally 30,000 issues in our backlog. So, and most customers are like, yeah, I would like all of those. So we could add a comment like that to every single issue. Like, oh, this customer also wants this. But it makes it very hard for us to prioritize. And what happens is that we tend to give less weight to these kind of comments because if there's not the information that we need there, we don't know how important it is. So, you know, we might not prioritize it sufficiently, even though this might be, a, you know, this very large prospect might say, well, if you add this feature to GitLab, I will move our entire enterprise over to Ultimate. So 
we need some more um, uh, some detail. So what I did in the product handbook is I wrote down what we would like to see. So linking to the source, so usually a Zendesk link or sometimes a uh, Salesforce link or sometimes Zendesk link is the first good one. But the second one is probably the most important one and that is to provide context. If you can include why someone might be interested in a particular feature in a particular change, it usually helps to just ask this, right? The moment someone gives you feedback to just send them why, like, why do you want this? Um, and what the customers might not directly tell you, but what you almost certainly know is that the context of the request, like they are already a GitLab user or they are not yet, or they are evaluating us or they are comparing us with another product or you know, they're looking to replace something else. And then lastly, and this is, goes back to the, what I told you in the very beginning, it's always worthwhile to mention the product manager and ask them anything that isn't clear to you. What we've got over the past few months, we did like a survey, we did a bunch of session with sales where we discussed like, how, how do you feel the interaction between product and sales? And the feedback we got is that it's not great, but what we also took from that was that it seems not completely clear how product works. A product manager should be able to answer you any question you might have. So if it's not clear from you what the status is from an issue, right? In theory, it should be, but sometimes it isn't. If it's not clear to you when we're shipping something, or whether something, you can always ask that. And if you do that at the same time, you share some feedback, then one, the product manager will immediately become aware of your comment and adding this. And second, uh, it gives you an opportunity to get the issue updated and to actually get an issue about this. And what usually happens is that if this is actually a very big deal for you or for your customer, the product manager will uh, come in contact with you and like, schedule a call with this customer or just walk over whatever you shared. Now, there are some cases where a customer says, I want to integrate with X. That doesn't mean anything to us. Integrating between two products, GitLab is massive, as you know, very powerful, but there's other products that are very big. So just saying integrating with something doesn't mean enough for us. And we get this request a lot, and, I, and, and it's a little bit frustrating to us to, for every single one of these comments, go in and say, okay, but what do you expect out of this integration? So I provided some guideline about that. So to make all of this e easier, I just made a template here. Um, we don't have quick feedback in comments yet in GitLab, but it's something we will do in the future. But what you could do is you could just copy paste this and then you have the fields that you would need to always provide um, great feedback. So you could simply copy paste this and make sure to fill everything out. So a link to, for instance, Salesforce. Why is this customer prospect interested in something? What are they currently having as a solution for this, right? This is important for us to know. For instance, we want to, um, you know, we want to compete with certain products like Jira. Like if they're using Jira for this now and they say, well, this is, you know, we use Jira for this now, but if you were to use, do this in GitLab, we could replace Jira. That's a big data point for us, right? It's very important for us to know, okay, this is why we should do this. And then, and this is what I discussed earlier. How important is it actually to this customer? Like, is this something like, if we don't have this, we can't use GitLab, or is it, some, is, is it a nice to have? Because as I said before, almost everything is nice to have in our backlog. So, you know, it's, it, and that's okay. And that, that, that feedback is still valuable to us, but um, it's, this is an important data point as well. And then if, if there's any questions, either be that from you or from the customer, right? If you don't know what the status is or you don't understand something about it or you know, it's just not clear how this would work, ask it. Um, maybe the customer has a similar kind of question. And then lastly, if you haven't already, you can mention a particular product manager. Now, you might say, wait, there was a good uh, comment by Mark Bell. Should the template include some indication of the size of the opportunity? Um, Yes, Mark, that's a, that's a great point. I, I should have added that here. Um, yes, I would very much appreciate that. If someone could take a note, then I'll make a merge request directly after this call, or I'll do it during the Q&A. So you might say, well, who do I contact? I have no idea which product manager to contact. Well, again, as we're just giving feedback, any product manager is fine, right? If you really don't know, and if you really can't find it, it would have been fine to mention any of them, um, even if it's just me every time. But I much prefer you to actually go to this section, which is appropriately named, which product manager should I contact? There's a link there to the product categories. And here you can quickly find 
for each stage, manage. Product manager, Jeremy. Plan, Victor. And if you don't know maybe a particular feature like issues, and you search for issue, and you click through, and there you go. Issues is, is part of plan, and therefore the product manager to, to contact is Victor. And that's all there is to it. Um, and if you're wondering, like, what is um, a similar kind of, uh, Kelly says, oh, a PM bot, that's, that's not, a, not a bad idea. What is, um, what is a good example? Um, I searched for a while. I couldn't find like great examples because this template is new. Most of this content was already in the product handbook, but I moved it up. Um, but actually there is a customer here that explained, that did most of these things where they say, look, we're looking for a new solution to all of this. We now use Track instead of GitLab. This is what we use in Track. And that's why we want to have this particular feature, uh, in this case, custom fields in GitLab. Um, blah, 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 we would use it like this. Um, and it's very important for us, otherwise we can't use GitLab for this and we're now setting up Jira instead. So this is almost a perfect example of how it would work. It's someone that says, this is what we're using now, this is our use case, um, et cetera. And here, this customer even mentions, I wouldn't care if this were added to Enterprise Edition because we are looking for a hosted solution. So that's, that's very interesting. Um, uh, but in general, if you share something from a customer, product will uh, have a suggestion about which or something we'll go into. So that is all I wanted to share. And I see that there's already um, some questions in the comments. Um, Excellent. Yo, yeah, thank you um, very much for the content. Um, John, can you um, stop recording and we'll open it up for the rest of the discussions and Yo, you can answer the one soon here. Tell me if we're recording. All right, we are. All right, so I'm showing right now how do you actually know where to post your Feedback, like a customer says, I am interested in X. How do you actually find an issue for X and whether it exists? So there was already a suggestion, which is just by using search. Um, there's two good ways to search. The first one is to use Google. So you can just type whatever keywords you have in Google and then cite gitlab.com um, and maybe even the group. It's, it's up to you how to do it. What you can also do is you can, and let me just focus my thing could go to gitlab.com, you can go directly to the top level group of GitLab org. So you don't have to think about uh, GitLab CE, GitLab EE, you can go to the top level group and you can search either even in epics or in the issues. Usually if you go through the issues, you will find something. Um, so if you want something with custom fields, you could type custom fields. And in this case, I get a 500, which is terrible. <laughs> That's the nature of uh, giving a name. But my, I think the quickest way usually is to go from top down thinking, which is a customer says, I want X. You can probably re uh, reason where in the product that would fall in which of the categories or each of the DevOps stages it falls. Um, and to see if we're planning something on the short term or if it's something within our radar, uh, it's usually a good idea to look through the direction page and specifically the direction page for individual stages. So if you go to the direction page, you could just search here, right? You could just command F, you could search through the page. Um, you can also look at the product vision for individual DevOps stages. So each DevOps stage has its own vision page. And on that vision page, we have more detailed information about what are the kind of things that we're looking to ship. So for instance, if a customer says, oh, I want you know, a deeper integration with uh, Jira, you could see here, oh, Jira integration, and then, and then the links to Epics in this case. And if you drill down there, you will find issues or maybe even this Epic to just comment on. It's a general point. Whatever you find is that somehow linked to your request, just leave that kind of feedback. If you mention the product manager, they will make sure that if it's not in the right place, it is moved to the right place. Um, yes, there are a lot of issues and yes, it can be very hard to find the right one. Um, so just make sure it lands somewhere. And in doubt, you just create a new issue. That's okay. Um, and if you want to choose between CE and EE, I would generally recommend to put it in EE because if a customer is requesting something is more likely that we're going to add it to uh, the EE tracker, but it doesn't really matter because if it has to be there, we are happy to move it as well. So search for it, try the top-down approach to go through the direction page. But if you can't find anything, just create an issue yourself or share it directly with the product manager. Either way is fine. 